Roads, and we're delighted to have you here for the Revival Prayer Connection. This is not about Canopy Roads tonight. This is about Jesus. It's about the whole community, and we are thrilled to be uh, host tonight uh, to something very special that God has started in the, uh, in the northeast part of our city, and we hope just spreads, well, as far as God wants it to spread. So uh, uh, it's been exciting to be a part of this. I was not part of the first one in uh, January, but... Uh, uh, in February, but was here for the, the last uh, couple, and it's just been just a huge blessing. So I'm going to call on Lou Ann Hunter, uh, one of the, uh, uh, the the team of three that are leading the uh, Revival Prayer Connection. So uh, Lou Ann, uh, Lou Ann, you're the associate pastor at Deer Lake Methodist Church. That's correct. And uh, so tell us about uh, the Revival Prayer Connection, what we're going to do tonight. Um, well, thank you, Pastor Matt, and I'm just so privileged and honored to be here tonight. Um, I represent, as Pastor Matt said, the Revival Prayer Connection team, and just wanted to say um, just a couple of words of why we gather, um, why we're here. Um, I know that, and meeting many of you, um, that you have been praying for years. I've heard uh, multiple times that there have been people praying for revival for a very long time, and so um, we have God has just been placing churches in our community together in an increasing measure. And we've had um, the opportunity to do things like uh, the Power in the Park and Secret Church. Um, and we just felt like God was calling us to join together, to cross interdenominational lines and to join together and to just pray for our community, our, um, our homes, our churches, our nation. Um, in our world um, for God to do something incredible. And two of the verses that I just want to um, mention to you that, that has really been um, sort of the driving force behind um, why we're gathering is Second Chronicles 7.14 is what the first one. It says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I, I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. And the second one is from Habakkuk 1 verse 5. And it says, look at the nations and watch and be utterly amazed. For I am going to do something in your days that you would not believe even if you were told. And so we gather tonight um, just to cry out to the Lord and ask him to do something in our day mm. that we would be utterly amazed. Mm -hmm. And I have um, seen it, I've heard stories, and I know that God is moving, and you are testimony to that. Um, so I just want to say thank you um, again for hosting us. Well, we'd like to find out who's here. So we're not going to ask everybody to introduce themselves, that'd take too long, but we'd uh, like to know, first of all, if you're here for the very first time, you've not been to any of the Revival Prayer Connections, would you just please stand? Just your first one. Awesome. That's great, guys. That's awesome. Thank you. Okay, now uh, what we'd like to do is, is, is keep up with how many churches are represented so we can communicate with the churches. Uh, it, that, by the way, there's a, a, a sign-in on the back. Uh, if you didn't sign in and get your name on the email list, you'd like to know about the next uh, Revival Prayer Connection. Be sure you do that before you leave. But we'd like to know what churches are represented here. So um, why don't we start over here, and uh, if you're with a new church or, or a church here, just uh, stand. let us know who, what church is represented. Only one person from each church needs to let us know. So Donna, where are you from? Canopy Roads. Roads. Okay. Somebody else? Different church back here? Yes. Bradfordville First Baptist. First Baptist. Okay. Somebody else? In the center here? Calvary Chapel, Calvary Chapel Tallahassee. New Covenant. New Covenant. Okay. Four Oaks. Four Oaks. You got it right? Can, can you get that, Christine? Okay. We're going fast enough. Okay. Yes. Uh, Freedom Church. Freedom Church. Okay. Kalar United, United Methodist. Life Point. Life Point. Okay, and you guys, are, I think, are, are you guys hosting in two months? Yeah. All right, you guys are hosting in two months. Where is your church located, by the way? Pedrick Road. Pedrick Road. Okay, we'll be there in, in the, the last Friday in July, right? Okay. Epiphany Lutheran. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Hilltop. Hilltop. Okay, excellent. Church of the Airport. 
There's a church in the airport. How cool is that? How many of you did not know there was a church in the airport? Now you know. How cool is that? That's awesome. All right. I prayed a lot of times when I took off, you know, so uh, no doubt about that. Yes. First Baptist. First Baptist? Okay. New Bethlehem Primitive Baptist Church. We were there last time. Okay. Chad. Redemption Hill. Okay. Deer Lake United Methodist. Deer Lake United Methodist. All right. Anywhere else? Isn't that cool? There's so many churches represented. That, that is awesome. Um, if you... <laughs> if you're a pastor here tonight, would you please stand... We'd like to recognize the pastors and introduce yourself. Where you're Stan Posey, Deer Lake. Stan Posey, Deer Lake, and Luann Hunter, Deer Lake, okay. Freedom, Gene Cobus. And your name is? Freedom Church, Gene Cobus. Gene Cobus, okay. Clyde Chimmett, Redemption Hill. Clyde Chimmett, Redemption Hill, okay. Jenny Crowley, we got the last name on September 10th. Okay, that's easy for you to say. All right. <laughs> Good job. Thanks, guys. We appreciate the pastors being here. I think, Luann, you're supposed to come back up and give us some more instructions here. With so many of you, I, I know that um, many of you have come to all of the Revival Prayer Connections, but for those of you who are new, um, I just wanted to quickly just kind of um, go over what to expect for the evening. Um, when you came in, you should have seen on the table, um, there's some sign-up sheets that if you would like to receive a reminder of our upcoming Revival Prayer Connections, Please put your name and your email address on that. If you received an email, then that means you're already on the list. Um, but if you would like to um, receive a reminder of that, please sign up in the um, foyer. Also, um, we have a new website. You can find out all the information that you need to there as well. It's revivalprayerconnection.com. Um, there's more information out in the lobby. Um, also, um, prayer sheets um, that will help to guide you through prayer if you would like. It's not necessary, but if you would like to pick um, a couple of those up, you're welcome to do that. We will have um, a time that Pastor Matt will come and share with us. We'll have worship. Um, the praise team will come and lead us in worship. And then we'll break into um, small groups. And what we would like for people to do is to break into groups of three to five people, no more than five people. Um, you can spread out in the sanctuary. You can, um, I think Pastor Matt said we can unhook chairs if we would yep. like. Um, and we would love it if you would even intermix churches. Um, so don't no, that's a requirement. they got to do that. Okay, yeah, it's a requirement, that, yeah. Pastor yeah. Matt says, that, that we have to intermix churches. Um, so um, three to five people. Um, let me just go ahead and say um, there may be some here tonight that this whole prayer thing is new to you and that's terrifying to think that you might be asked to pray. No one will ask you to pray out loud. No one is expected or required to pray out loud. If you would like to, um, you may. We would encourage you to. Um, but you can pray silently, too. The Lord hears us. Um, so um, we'll have a time um, that Pastor Matt will um, dismiss us into these groups. Um, and then after a certain amount of time, then he will call us back and end the gathering. Um, we also have on the tables as you leave um, feedback. And we'd love to hear from you. Um, to hear about your experience or any suggestions that you might have for us in the future. So. Thanks, Luann. Last uh, Sunday, we were uh, in the last, in, in, in our church here, in the last part of the Acts chapter 9. And I, I talked a little bit about uh, revival because we uh, I wanted to challenge our church to be a part of this. And in preparation for that message, I went back and reread some church history, and and we just, uh, of course, the, many of you are familiar with the the great movements of God over the uh, over the the years in in our country. The first Great Awakening in the um, uh, mid to late 1700s, uh, the second Great Awakening in the late 1700s into the uh, 1830s and 40s. There was a there's one I had heard of but had forgotten about that it, I just wanted to call to your attention tonight, called the Layman's Prayer Revival. How many of you have never heard of the Layman's Prayer Revival? Yeah. So it's uh, the, uh, the old Dutch Reformed Church in New York City 
was, uh, was so uh, concerned about the conditions in New York City. In fact, they were overwhelmed by the spiritual conditions. This was in the 1850s. And they just, they felt impressed to, to, uh, to, to do something about it. But they were overwhelmed. They, they were, the spiritual conditions were terrible. This was, uh, the effects of the Second Great Awakening were waning. It had ended about 10 to 15 years earlier. Uh, there was widespread immorality, apathy in the churches, uh, you know, all sorts of dishonesty in businesses and people being cruel to each other. It sounded a whole lot like today, you know. Uh, so, and uh, so they were concerned about this, but they were just overwhelmed by, by the need. And there was an exciting young layman in the church named Jeremiah Lamphier. He was 40 years old, 40-year-old businessman. And they brought him on staff with the challenge to be the staff evangelist and to just go out and uh, we're going to pay you to go evangelize. Just do what you can to, to make a difference in this city for Christ. So he bought a lot of Bibles, started passing out Bibles and tracts and did street witnessing. And he was so overwhelmed by the enormity of the human need, of the spiritual need, of the, of the degradation in the city. He just didn't know what to do. So one day he prayed, Oh God, what wilt thou have me do? And God told him what to do. He said, go start a prayer meeting. So this was July of 1857. He went back to uh, the staff of the church and the elders and said, this is what God's laid in my heart. And they weren't really impressed with his plan to save the city, was just have a prayer meeting. He said, but you know, he's new on staff. They don't want to discourage the young man. So, okay, okay, okay. So they gave him a room upstairs, uh, not the sanctuary, just gave him a little room upstairs. And he went up there and said, and found the place and said, this is what we're going to do. We're going to pray every Wednesday from 12 to 1. So he put together some flyers and started passing them out in the city. Just person after person after person. We're going to have this prayer meeting. This is the conditions of, of New York City. And we're going to have this prayer meeting every Wednesday from 12 to 1. So the, the first Wednesday rolled around when they were supposed to have it. He's the only one showed up at noon. Then about 10 minutes later, another guy came in. And by the end of the hour, there were six people there. The next week, there were about 20 there. The next week, there were between 30 and 40 there. And they decided at that point, we're going to meet every day. We don't care how many people show up. We're going to meet every day. The next week, there were about 50 to 100 there. And within two months, they had filled three large rooms. And within six months, are you ready for this? there were over 50,000 people praying every day in New York City. Can you imagine that even today? Much less with a much smaller population. 50,000 people a day, and that was just New York. It started spreading to other cities. And within three years, estimates are that a million people were saved. And something kind of difficult happened for our country, in our country, just a couple years after that, right? The Civil War. God was preparing our country for the most devastating experience in the history of our co the country. And even during the Civil War, chaplains on both sides led hundreds of thousands of people to Christ. God is at work in the worst of times. Wouldn't it be awesome to see that start here? 40-year-old lay guy said, God, what do you want me to do? Start a prayer meeting. I believe he spoke to three ladies and said, what are we supposed to do? Start a prayer meeting. And you're here tonight because somebody listened to God. And, and that's exciting. So uh, I, I want to lead us through tonight. We're going to try to lead you through the four major uh, uh, types of prayer. Adoration. And praise band, you guys come on up here and get back on stage. Um, adoration. Praise. Confession. Thanksgiving, and supplication. So we're, we're going to move through these four types uh, of prayer tonight. The first three we're going to move through during uh, the time of music. And, and we're going to begin with, with adoration because that's the way we should approach God, beginning with adoration, right? We should be awed and amazed by who God is. And, and then we're going to move to confession and then Thanksgiving, and then we'll break up into our, our prayer groups. 
uh, for our, our time of supplication, asking God for things. We tend to begin with supplication, don't we? We start with the end in mind, only we, we skip all the part about praising God and thanking God and confessing our sins. We want to get to asking God for stuff, you know, asking God for help. And, and you know, we need to begin where the Scripture says we should begin, with praising God. So join me as we prayerfully read from the Psalms. This is Psalm 8. O Lord our God, how majestic is your name in all the earth, who displayed your splendor above the heavens. From the mouth of infants and nursing babes, you have established strength because of your adversaries to make the enemy and the revengeful cease. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you take thought of him, and the son of man that you care for him? Yet you have made him a little lower than God, and you crown him with glory and majesty. You make him to rule over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the heavens, and the fish of the sea, whatever passes through the pass of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Lord, your name truly is majestic. Your name is the name that is above all names. And we are here tonight, Lord, to offer our praise and our worship and our adoration of who you are. God, we praise you because you are the creator. You are the one who has no beginning and no end. You are the beginning and end of all things. Lord, you are, you are the majestic one. You're the king of kings and lord of lords. And we are here tonight to offer you our sacrifice of praise. Would you stand as we begin to praise him? Come set you roll and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil why we're made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope, like wildfire in our very souls. Holy Spirit, come invade us now. We are your church, and we need your power in Your kingdom first. We hunger and we thirst. We refuse to waste our lives for your joy and pride. To see the captive hearts release the hurt, the sick, the poor at peace. We lay down our lives for heaven's
welcome you here this morning. Build your kingdom here, let the darkness fear, show your mighty hand, heal our streets and land, set your church on fire, witness nation back, change the atmosphere, build your
you've done for me. you've done for me. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave worthy is the lamb who is slain worthy is the king who conquered the grave worthy is the lamb who is slain worthy 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 oh this is amazing grace this is a failing love that you would take Please be seated. We do serve an awesome God. The thing about serving a perfect God is that uh, when, you, uh, when you come into the presence of a perfect God, you realize how imperfect you are. When I come into God's presence and I really see God for who he is, and he helps me see me for who I am, I realize that this sin that needs to be confessed. Let me read this to you. First John chapter 1, beginning of verse 5, it says, This is the message we've heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. There's no sin at all in God, only glorious light. He's sinlessly perfect. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth because, you see, darkness and light can't exist in the same time, right? And neither can sinners in the presence of a holy God. And if we say that we're walking in light and we're following Jesus, but the sin in our life, we really aren't. Because we really can't have fellowship with God when there's sin in our lives. But if we walk in the light, as he in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of, his, of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. That's the good news, right? If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and truth is not in us. No such thing as a perfect Christian, is there? 
If we confess our sins, he is faithful, not we're faithful. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from most of our unrighteousness. That's good news, isn't it? Even when we don't, clean, we don't even know everything to confess, when we're so imperfect, it's hard for us to even know. And the Holy Spirit, if the Holy Spirit were to bring to me everything, everything that was wrong with me, it would crush me. But he brings what I need to confess. But God cleanses us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. An important part of prayer is first of all praise and recognizing God for who he is. But when we come into his presence and realize that he is light, and so oftentimes there's sin in our lives, we are, he's invited us to come out of the darkness into the light and have fellowship with him. And the only way we can come out of the darkness is through confession, but it's an open invitation. So tonight, I'd just like to lead us in a time of confession. And no, I'm not going to confess all my sins out loud for you guys, okay? Uh, but it's important for us to, to come together. And uh, I know when we come together with believers, we, we all have sin in our lives. There are disappointments and, and the ways we've, we've uh, if you can disappoint a God who knows the future. Um, but I just want to lead us in a time of prayer tonight and, and confession. And if God lays something on your heart, will you just, just confess it to him, just you and him? Just do some business with God right now. Let's pray. Just confess whatever God lays on your heart. Maybe you left the house this morning in a hurry and you were harsh or you were hurtful in what you said. Maybe to the kids. Maybe that guy who cut you off in traffic. Maybe to your spouse. You just confess that right now. Have you gotten too close to someone to whom you're not married? Have you shared secrets that are happening in your home? Frustrations in your marriage with someone of the opposite sex to whom you're not married? Just confess that to God. Guard your heart. Are there other relationships in your life that um, you're holding bitterness in your heart towards someone? Maybe there's something that's been said to a family member, something that's been said to you. Just confess that right now to God. Have you fudged expense reports? Have you fudged the truth in trying to make a sale? Have you been dishonest in any way, misled anyone in any way by not telling the whole truth? Did you respond when God said, speak to that person today? Or maybe there's somebody else in your life, a neighbor, someone you work with, a family member, and God said, you need to speak to them. You need to tell them about Jesus. And you haven't done that yet. Would you just confess that? Are you honoring God with your resources? Is the face that you're putting on to come to a revival prayer service the real you? Would you just confess it to God? He knows you. Confess whatever God lays on your heart. He already knows the truth. God, thank you for your forgiveness. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying for every single sin. Every sin we committed in the past, every sin we committed today, every sin we'll commit in the future, Lord, we thank you that your work on the cross covered it all. There's nothing we can do to add to that. We thank you, Lord, for your forgiveness. Lord, remove any barrier to our fellowship with you tonight. We don't want anything to stand between us and you. So, Lord, we confess our sins to you. 
And we pray that you would cleanse us. We want to move into the light, Lord, because we want to be in the light with you. Help us move out of the darkness and into the light. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Would you stand? And join with me as, um, as we begin to talk about Thanksgiving. Psalm 100 is one of my favorite psalms. Let's say it together. Shout joyfully to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful singing. Know that the Lord himself is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his loving kindness is everlasting, and his faithfulness to all generations. Let's continue to pray. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul. Worship your holy name. The sun comes up. It's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be seen.
worship you, Lord. We give you all thanks and praise, Father. Hear our worship this morning, this evening, and help us to hear from you tonight. Here's my 
just want to hear from you and to do your will. So, Lord, help us to listen to you, God. Help us to hear your voice and your truth and to do what you are calling us to. In the name of your son, Jesus, amen. Standing. We're about to be dismissed to your prayer groups. Just a couple of quick words, um, just to affirm what Luann said earlier. Groups of three to five, please no more than that. Uh, I encourage you to pray with someone that's not from your church. Um, that's kind of part of why we're here is to is to see God's working in not just our church, you know. So and to meet people from other other places, introduce yourself, uh, pray for what God lays on your heart, and uh, just you know. So there's no script for this. You bring your own script. You bring your needs. You bring your burdens for what God has placed on your heart about your family, your church, your community, our nation, our world, and, uh, and you just pray that together. Um, if you're uncomfortable praying out loud, you can just pray silently. So this is for everybody. We don't have a script here. We're just here to meet with God and bring our needs before him. Uh, adoration, confession, thanksgiving, supplication. Let me just leave these with these words as we dismiss to our prayer groups. Acts 4.31, and when they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and continued to speak the word of the Lord with boldness. May it be so with you. Feel free to disconnect chairs here. There are several uh, sets already set up in the back. Uh, enjoy your time with God.